Today we're going to take a look at the Adi Zero uh, Prime X Strung. It amplifies in many ways all of Adidas' latest technologies. First, it's a 49.5 uh, heel, 41 millimeter forefoot, so beyond the legal limit for race. Yet with all that enormous stack, it weighs only 8.68 ounces, 257 grams in my US 9 sa sample, and that's a 17 gram, 0.6 ounce drop from the prior version. It has the strung upper. These are individually laid down fibers that can go in multiple directions and multiple densities, and it's data-driven. Underfoot, we have uh, the energy rods, plus in the purple, I think, a foam, a hardened foam plate. Um, th the makeup really delivers an unbelievable ride. We do have some issues with the volume of the upper, not so much its hold. So Sally Riley and I have taken them out, and we think this is the most exciting running shoe we've ever run in in terms of its energy, and it's uh, it's just sheer joy to run, like a sensation of flight like no other, as Sally said. So now I'm going to get into some of the details and then share share with you my run impressions. So please stay tuned. The Primex Strung will be $300. It will be available at Adidas September 29th, 2022. Okay, before we take them out and share our run impression, let's get into a few details here with our Prime X Strung. So, of course, the star of the show here, um, as far as the update, is the Strung Upper. So, uh, from everything I can tell, it's a 3D printed by robot upper, so there's no weaving or um, mesh here. It's printed in layers of strands you can see the strands we have uh for example in the toe box we have white strands uh with a few gray strands and then as we go towards the midfoot and the hold you can see this array of strands that can go in multiple directions the uh, robot allows them to do that so we essentially i think have a printed upper here uh, if we look inside, you can see it's sort of a, it's not a regular kind of um, uh, structure, very, uh, it's not kind of all uh, the same kind of direction. Uh, and you can see, for example, here at the heel, you've got much denser uh, fibers and the fibers are different to provide the hold here. And then even as you go further back, it's even denser. So I think it's applied hot and they kind of all melt together. Um, you're going to get more comments on the fit, on the run. It is a quite voluminous upper here. Uh, I'm a half size up, and to really make them work, I had to wear thicker socks, and I also had to use a sock liner from an Adios uh, 6, and that really uh, helped with the fit. So you definitely don't want to size up. It is going to favor higher volume fit, feet. I might even size down half a size if you have a narrow low volume foot. Interestingly, while it's voluminous, it is well held and it is considerably uh, better held, I think, than the earlier cellar mesh upper here, which was a mono mesh with all these overlays. Um, before we talk about kind of the comparison of the uh, fit of these two uppers and how they hold, I'll say right away that the hold of our new upper is considerably better. Even this one was true to size. Another kind of advantage I see, and Adidas doesn't call it out, is by printing the upper, there's far less waste. There's no uh, cutting and uh, gluing of uh, not only the mono mesh here, but also all these overlays. Everything is, most everything here is I think all of a piece printed. Um, the lacing uses uh, a uh, kind of little loops there you see, which are part of a inner webbing, orange webbing. And they're a bit stiffened, I think, again, heated maybe. Uh, so they, they hold really well. I had to lace pretty tight because of the volume, but the midfoot hold is really, really excellent. There's plenty of toe box room, you know, maybe a bit too voluminous for me, but it this, um, this strung approach really is promising. Um, 
just to reduce a bit the volume, I think would help would help me. Um, in terms of the midsole, uh, very, very similar, if not identical. I couldn't really tell a difference, but the new approach to the heel, um, to the heel area uh, and our strung really gives it a much better, I think, secure lockdown, particularly here, the midfoot. Look how mushy that is compared to here, all of a piece. Um, the upper is very comfortable. I think it should prove also very breathable as well. Um, and it's strange because here, in the older version, we actually have some stiffener back here, but the strung approach here of just denser layers of these fibers in all directions uh, seems to provide enough hold that really the shoe is now stable. Oh my goodness, what a ride this shoe provides. It's truly, truly spectacular. We're gonna give you our pros and cons, but as Sally said, there is an unbelievable sense of flight here. Uh, we've, both of us, ran faster uh, than um, we expected or planned with uh, low perceived effort. It's really an amazingly fast shoe. Sadly, not official race legal because of our 49 millimeter, uh, um, he 49 and a half heel, 41 forefoot. But what's really interesting compared to the Adios Pro is while the foam I think is a touch softer than in the Pro, more of it seems to make a huge difference. I find the Adios Pro quite rigid. It's a very much a elite focus shoe, very, quite prescriptive. Nothing wrong with it. It's a really fine shoe. I've run some, ran a nice fast race in it. But here you've just got much, much, much more energy. I think part of what's going on is our energy rods are uh, not as rigid as in the Adios Pro um, uh, 2 and 3. Don't have confirmation on that. Um, and we also seem to have a secondary plate of maybe hardened foam here, the purple, which provides some forefoot stability. Um, while I don't think the foam is much softer, just the general sensation here is of a much more smooth flowing uh, shoe, much more uh, bounce, consistent bounce off the front, less sensation of the rods in the mix and you know we we they're they're pretty much embedded if you will uh 20 millimeters um about 20 millimeters below the outsole and roughly at the front here 20 millimeters um below the uh below the foot so they're well kind of cushioned or uh, embedded in soft foam. So even if they do turn out to be the same firmness, there's more of a sensation of sinking and bouncing than in the race shoe. Um, the fit is comfortable. I wouldn't call it exactly true to size because of the volume, um, but I've made it work with thicker socks and this uh, sock liner here, additional that I just put in on top of the glued in one. Uh, and I was just fine. My narrower, you'll see in the video, my narrower right foot, I struggled a bit more with that one uh, because I actually put the sock liner in my wider shoe. I, I put it in the wrong shoe, but I was fine on, a, uh, on the run, which I'm going to describe now. My first run was at sea level, and I kind of shocked myself with about three miles well under eight minutes pace. And then in Park City, uh, up here at altitude, I ran about 6.4 miles, nine minute pace, all uphill, about 400 feet of climbing, 140 meters. So uh, quite a bit of climbing on that run. The beautiful Wasatch Park City ridgeline here. Let's talk a bit more about fit. Actually, I've been running on this road base and... Oh boy, are they soft and bouncier yet here. So I have a, a nine, half size up from my normal. In my wider foot over here, I put an extra thin sock liner like you might find a D06, and I've got a really good fit. Over here, I didn't. I left the glued in sock liner, and I gotta say, I think I could use that extra sock liner. There is quite a bit of volume here. I don't think anybody should size up in this shoe unless they have a really gigantically wide foot. Go true to size. You can see where my toe is, uh, a little bit more in the thumb. Um, the upper is comfortable, supportive, even though the rear isn't quite as well held as I'd like on my narrower foot without the sock liner. The 
strung here <laughs> is really effective in kind of holding the rest of the foot. I do have a bit more height here in my uh, narrower foot than over here. I'd like a little less volume there. But all in all, it's a really intriguing upper and it's a really, I think, an improvement over the prior cellar mat. But really quite amazing, the ride here. So cruising along here, all uphill, averaging about 903 pace, heart rate about 148. Very smooth and easy here at altitude, 2,000 meters plus. You've got a lot of nice bounce, a lot of rebound, really nice. Ali and I agree on this shoe that it has the most unbelievable sensation of flight that I've ever experienced in a running shoe. It's the most dramatic, very fast ride with a huge smooth re rebound off the forefoot, maybe ever. Uh, massive amounts of forgiving cushion and it's not in the way of speed. At only 8.68 ounces, 257 grams for the 49 and a half, 41 stack height, the weight to cushion ratio is amazing. And it drops 17 grams or 0.6 ounces from the predecessor. Uh, in terms of con, the upper volume is excessive at the listed true, true to size, even if surprisingly well held by the excellent strung upper. Uh, I'd like to see more heel counter and sadly, it's both illegal for international competition due to the stack height, and it's at $300. It is quite pricey, so maybe not as versatile um, because this shoe clearly could be used for both racing and training uh, if it wasn't illegal. Please also check out our multi-tester written review by Sally and Sam over at Road Trail Run. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great run.